All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday, Locked on Giants, Locked on Eagles. I'm Patricia Trino of Locked on Giants. He is Gino Camilleri of Locked on Eagles. And Gino, give me your keys to a Philadelphia victory. Number one, Jalen Hurts cannot turn the ball over. You see the results when he holds on to the ball. They take care of it. He doesn't give the offense of the other team good field position. Hold on to the football. Number two. This Eagles defense, they need the New Orleans performance and they need the performance against the Browns. In those two games, they combined to allow the offense to score a single touchdown in both of those games. So they have to do that against a Giants team, which at home last week did not put up many points with their offense. And number three, the hidden points matter. Their special teams has been downright abysmal. At the end of the half last week, they kick a 57-yarder. It ends up getting blocked by Miles Garrett. All of a sudden, a 17-3 game turns into a 10-10 game. You cannot give teams, especially in a division game, multiple chances to stay in it. So the offense, defense, special teams, they all got to click. It, it seems simple, but every single week they seem to mess it up, and I still think it's because they do not have the right guy up top calling all the shots right now. Hey, Hold our beer. We had the same problem. <laughs> Not that we we had the right guy at the top, but I'm saying as far as playing complimentary football, all three oh, units, yeah. we definitely uh, can, have had problems they, with, with the Giants doing that. Can't uh, have Thanksgiving uh, dinner together. That's how I like yeah. to say it. They all got to yeah. sit at separate tables. Exactly. From a Giants perspective, obviously, they need Daniel Jones to play like the Daniel Jones we saw against the Seattle Seahawks. He was sharp. Um, not many mistakes. Uh, and then he comes out against the Cincinnati Bengals and that whopper of an interception in the red zone. I mean, you just can't have that. So mm -hmm. score in the red zone that, you know, I call it the dead zone. It's Halloween's coming up. So we'll call it the dead zone because it's been spooky. <laughs> and for whatever reason, Daniel Jones gets spooked when he's down inside the 20. So we need better production production from Daniel Jones. Um, for the Giants to start scoring some points, you know, I mean, they've got this, this, this creative offense that Brian Dable's trying to run, but what good is it if you're not getting into the end zone, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So from a, from the other side of the ball, uh, this is going to sound very elementary, but Saquon Barkley worries me. He's playing well. He was always, you know, you, you know, you, you don't realize what you have until he's gone. Mm -hmm. and you go back and you look at the tape and he doesn't look like he's lost a step at all. And I have to believe he's going to come into the MetLife Stadium motivated. You know, he's got a lot of friends still, you know, amongst the coaching staff, amongst the players. But uh, I don't get the feeling there's any love lost between him and maybe Joe Shane, the general manager, because they couldn't get a deal done with him. So I think Saquon, you know, is going to come in here and he's going to want to show everybody, yeah, I still got it. This is what mm. you guys gave up. So uh, stopping him is going to be key. And, you know, the Giants, the run defense has gotten a little bit better, but you still have those breakdowns where the run fits aren't there or guys aren't maintaining, you know, the integrity. They're not containing. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about that. You know, guys getting washed out and, uh, or, or sealed off. Um, so I'm curious to see how that, that uh, how they defend Saquon because Saquon can set up so many things for the Eagles passing game. So if you can make the Eagles one dimensional, you might just have a chance of forcing a few of those Jalen Hurts turnovers that I know Eagle fans are hoping not to see on Sunday. Deshaun Jackson, when he left to go to Washington, had a quote that said, I don't care about the result of the game. I just want to go for 100 and a touchdown. And he did exactly that. I know Saquon Barkley did not have a quote, but he said one today that said, I could go for 300 yards or 10 yards as long as we win. And I think that's the biggest load of crap. I, I'm with you, Patricia. I would be worried about him too. He has not lost a step. If you do not maintain your rush lanes, it he might get stopped for a rush for two yards, three yards, go back for a negative one, but then all of a sudden he has one for 68 yards that puts you right back in the football game. And the Eagles, they win with their run game right now. There's no doubt about it. You have to stop Saquon Barkley if you want to win, and I think the Eagles have to get him going if they want to win football games. And it's going to come down to the quarterback taking care of the football, I think, at the end of the day. Whichever one does not have the turnovers, I think, is going to win the football game. And 
hopefully it's not a slop fest. Hopefully we actually get some good offensive performance and the defense tackles well. And we're saying, oh, okay, both teams played well. And at the end of the day, one comes out with a win, one comes out with a loss. But hopefully it's my Philadelphia Eagles because I do not want to go and talk to Lou if this team's three and three come Monday. (laughs) Well, I don't have to worry about that since I go solo, but I don't want to have to come on and and do another downer show like I did on Oh, they're the worst. I want to be positive. They are the absolute worst. And I feel bad for my listeners because every week it's like, what's going on? How do we fix this? And it's the same thing. You know, it's like, you know, everybody's back on the get rid of Daniel Jones train Mm -hmm. or do this, that. And, you know, at this point, the roster is what it is. I don't know how much more they can tweak it um, at this point. But, uh, yeah, it would not be a good thing for the Giants to lose to the Eagles. They did beat them the last time they met. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's hope. And like you said, Nick Sirianni is running the show. And I'm sorry, Eagle fans, but that dude is just – Wow. (laughs) If you want entertainment, the Eagles will provide that. That is for certain. (laughs) You should be watching this game for the entertainment value alone because Nick Sirianni is going to do something that's going to make you say, what is this? This guy's a head coach of a football team, but the players are what we support. And I think they have what it takes to go get it done. And I think this is a little bit higher scoring than their last game was. And I think they're going to give the Giants some opportunities to push the football and if you're over at FanDuel, I think go with the over. I don't know what the points total is right now. I'm sure it's around 46 or 47, but I think a lot of points are going to be scored, especially in a one o'clock window. Neither team is in prime time. They can just operate with Eagles fans and Giants fans watching. Nobody else, no stressors. But this is the first one of the year. NFC's matchups, nothing better. Best division in football. Hopefully both of our fans enjoy it.